What's up, everybody? It's your good friend, Lukey, and I'm here to talk about Chris Eubanks Jr. getting a 10th round knockout over Liam Smith. He got his revenge. Is Bo Mack the greatest coach ever, or at least the one that all the famous fighters are going to go to? Will we see Conor Ben fight Chris Eubank Jr.? Get ready to dance to the groovy intro. Those answers are next. So, uh, we learned a lot today, one of which is not to discredit Chris Eubank Jr. for this win, but Liam Smith is a fighter who is older, and he knocked out Chris Eubank Jr. Now, hindsight is twenty twenty. With this result, people are going to look back at that first fight and say, okay, Eubank Jr. was winning until he wasn't. He got knocked out. Look at this fight and say, okay, that was just the outlier result but what i saw was liam smith kind of tricked eubank walked him into a big shot stops him in this fight what i saw was an older fighter rolls his ankle looks like he had come into the fight with an injury looked as though he's incredibly tough in liam smith but just didn't have the physical gifts which i don't know if he ever really had he was more of a rugged guy a tough guy a true professional's professional but it looked like a guy closer to the end of his career than the start of his career. With Eubank Jr., Pauli Malignaggi did an excellent analysis of this where he had felt that Eubank had done more things right than wrong in the fight and that it was more of a mental battle than it was a physical battle for him. There was apprehension with Eubank Jr., but once he started to believe in himself, this was one-way traffic for the majority of the fight. Eubank Jr. began to take over this fight rather dominantly. And um, that was that was impressive to see. Now, what happens from this is the there's going to probably be no trilogy unless Eubank Jr. finds himself in some trouble and he needs to land another big fight and Liam Smith's willing to do it. This fight is probably going to be put together in two fights and it's also going to probably be remembered as Chris Eubank Jr.'s 2023, which was weird. He gets knocked out, comes back, avenges it, gets Brian Bomack McIntyre in his corner and then that helps him uh, whether rightly or wrongly that's the narrative okay they fixed everything now they're back for me what I see is we're and after the fight I left out Chris Eubank Jr. calls out Golovkin who's like what 41 42 years old I mean really ambitious stuff right we're gonna call out the oldest guy who's basically retired in the division very honorable um but where we're really going, I feel, is we're going to Chris Eubank Jr. versus Conor Ben. I don't know if that's the next fight. I feel like Conor Ben has to take a fight before he were to fight Chris Eubank Jr. because you can't just go straight into that fight and risk any potential violations. It's obvious Conor Ben has some sketchy history with drugs, you know. We also don't really know what drug-free sport is. It's like we've condemned VADA and said a bunch of bad things about VADA. But what is drug-free sport? I'm not really sure what it is. And I'm sure drug-free sport would be what would monitor this fight if that happened. We're all signs point to the fact that Chris Eubank Jr., Connor Ben will happen. And I think from this performance, all signs tell me that Conor Ben will probably win that fight because Chris Eubank Jr., good fighter, um, has some great athletic gifts, but he just doesn't quite have it. I don't know how to, else to say it. His 10th round stoppage of Liam Smith, that was a mercy stoppage. That was a flurry of punches that were thrown in sequence. But really, that was like, Box Rec Gray said that was a Joe Calzaghi, Peter Manfredo stoppage. That wasn't a let's really make a statement stoppage. That was a stoppage in which another referee might not have stopped the bout. This referee did. Fair play. To me, I think we're going into this because Conor Ben is probably the next big UK matchroom fighter for Eddie Hearn if he can stay on the straight and narrow and not have drug issues. If he cannot have drug issues, which seems to be his holdup, which has stalled out his career because he hasn't fought for over a year because of these issues, um, he just seems to be the next guy that could take over for an Anthony Joshua. Though he doesn't fight at heavyweight, 
he feels like the next face or person that could be dominant uh, for Matchroom. And it feels like Chris Eubank Jr., really, really inconsistent career, lots of potential, but just never quite could win the big fight. It's great that he gets this rematch, and this this will be remembered more so as Liam Smith landed a lucky punch rather than this was the beginning of the end of the career. But if Eubank Jr. is going to fight Conor Ben, I don't really see much that he can do other than being the bigger guy. And if there's any form of a catch weight, that does not favor Chris Eubank Jr. in any capacity. I think the final thing I'd like to note is we had heard all people talking about the Derek James business. Derek James was the, we always have these celebrity coaches, right? Freddie Roach was a celebrity coach for a while because he had Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao is a very exciting fighter. So then a lot of fighters go to Manny Pacquiao and work with Marvin Smudio because that it's a very popular um, historic gym and lots of big opportunities seemingly will come to you because you're around all these big fighters, famous fighters, and it, it, there's a round robin. We saw it with Virgil Hunter, with Andre Ward. Andre Ward obviously being one of the best fighters of his era. People go to Virgil Hunter. Then we kind of saw a, a shift into Derek James. You know, Derek James marketed really well, has some really interesting fighters. Uh, Errol Spence Jr., Jermel Charlo, who he picked up later in his career, you know, and Juan Guzman seems to be doing a lot of the work right now. And now it seems like after Crawford outclassed Errol Spence, the new trainer is the three-headed monster of Bomac, uh, Saul, and Red Spikes. And it's awesome because they've been really underappreciated for most of the career. Yes, maybe tactically Bomac set some things up and did a few things here and there but to me really what i saw is they create an environment that allows an athlete to excel at the highest level based on the situation and based on the comfort they present i think when you have a 33 34 year old fighter 32 31 whatever eubank jr is maybe he's younger than that it's really hard to change the identity of someone it's like trying to teach someone religion at 40 unless they've had alcohol issues and they're trying not to be an alcoholic then it's a little easier to indoctrinate them into religion once you get to a certain point in life it's just hard um to believe other things it's hard to go back and it's i i think the coach often doesn't get enough credit but in these circumstances i think the coach gets too much credit the coach doesn't fight the fights Bomack and the, his team is coming in and they're taking a very good fighter and they just have to manage him in situations to excel to the best of his abilities. I think it's going to be a new storyline because we had been pushed. Derek James, greatest coach. He should be coach of the year. Remember Brian Custer. Every time he comes on, Brian Custer goes out of his way to say, Derek James, you're the trainer of the year. You should win it. So with the way Bomack outclassed Derek James, both coaching and uh, Crawford outclassing Spence, I think that that ideology has now carried over to Bomack, and now you're going to see some fighters looking to resurrect their career working with that collective of people, and Chris Eubank Jr. seems to be the first one. Final thoughts, I think that he's going to end up fighting Conor Ben. Do I know when? No. Do I care? Not really. But I think it'll be a somewhat interesting fight. Like, I wouldn't be mad to buy a pizza and sit and watch it. But if you're asking my honest opinion, in those fights, typically the younger person wins. And Conor Ben's the younger person. He's The only thing against him right now is he has a very questionable history with performance-enhancing drugs. And he has a terrible attitude about it. And I'm not saying he's guilty, but he's behaving like someone who doesn't feel any any empathy or sympathy towards people feeling that he could be cheating. Like he's behaving very much as though he's entitled, which is very off-putting. So that's my thought on the fight. Subscribe to the channel. Like the channel. Show me some love. I'm about to be gone for a few, a few uh, minutes. But hopefully the channel doesn't die down for you because I'm going to try to pre-record some content to give you some interesting stuff.